A super carrier outweighs a skyscraper, but in the face of a hurricane, steel bends in a floating city turns fragile. And when aircraft carriers face massive hurricanes, we expose the real stakes. What happens when USS George Washington nears Typhoon Haiyan's 195 mile per hour winds, or when USS Essex approaches Meggie's Category 5 core? Even giants can be brought to the brink, and most never see it coming. A carrier's flight deck is engineered for relentless motion, but there are limits no commander can ignore. When winds rise above 45 knots across the deck, every launch and recovery is suspended. The risk isn't just to the aircraft. Gusts at that threshold can send loose gear skidding and threaten to snap tie-down chains. Even the largest ships obey the physics of the sea. Swells climbing past 4 meters, over 13 feet, begin to break over the bow, sending green water surging across the deck and flooding scuppers. At 6 meters, the flight deck becomes a danger zone, with waves high enough to batter the sponsons and threaten to tear open access hatches. In these conditions, flight operations halt instantly. The ship's island and superstructure amplify wind loads, turning the deck into a wind tunnel where even a parked jet can become a hazard. Every decision on the bridge is measured against these raw numbers, 45 knots of wind, 4 to 6 meters of wave. Beyond that, the only option is to secure every aircraft, shut down the deck, and ride out the storm, knowing that nature sets the ceiling for what even a supercarrier can attempt. When a hurricane bears down, the carrier's survival depends on more than shutting down flight operations. Engineers flood ballast tanks deep in the hull, shifting thousands of tons of seawater to lower the ship's center of gravity. Getting this balance wrong, too much or too little, can make the ship sluggish or dangerously stiff, amplifying each roll and risking damage to the structure and equipment. The metacentric height, or GM, is carefully managed, usually kept between 2 and 3 meters for Nimitz-class carriers, to prevent sudden lurches that could snap tie-downs or send aircraft sliding. Every pad eye welded into the deck is rated to hold between 30,000 and 45,000 pounds, but repeated shock loads from waves and wind can test even these limits. Aircraft are chained down with six or more lashings, and tie-down points are checked hour by hour as the ship rides the storm. Commanders face a critical choice. Stand further offshore in deeper water, where waves are larger but grounding is impossible, or edge closer to land, risking shallows but sometimes finding a lee from the worst seas. Every decision is a trade-off between safety, stability, and mission urgency, with no room for error when the margin is measured in tons and seconds. These technical measures form the last line of defense before the storm's force is felt directly on steel. Nuclear carriers become lifelines in disaster zones, not just warships. After Super Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines in November 2013, the USS George Washington Strike Group anchored 120 nautical miles off Leyte Gulf. The sea still heaved with 30-foot swells and wind gusts battered the deck, forcing helicopters to stay chained down. Captain David Thomas kept the carrier just outside the storm's reach, adjusting course to keep wind over the bow below safe launch limits. As soon as the wind eased, helicopters lifted off, bridging the gap to shattered airfields in Tacloban and Guayuan. A flight operations officer remembered, We could only launch helicopters when the wind gave us 10-minute gaps, otherwise it was a war with the elements, not the enemy. In 2005, the USS Harry S. Truman arrived after Hurricane Katrina, serving as Joint Task Force Gulf Coast's flagship. 16-foot swells still rocked the Gulf, but the Truman stability allowed non-stop helicopter missions in desalinated water for shore. Vice Admiral Gerald Hewing called it a stable platform for command, power, and relief. USS Wasp arrived off the battered New Jersey coast with 18 helicopters and decks still slick from Sandy's retreat. Deck crews worked in foul weather gear, hands numb as they relashed aircraft hour after hour. Gusts over 40 knots rattled tie-down chains and sent spray sweeping across the flight deck. A chief recalled, Securing birds on deck was every sailor's job, not just the air wing. Every tie-down mattered. Helicopters cycled out to flooded neighborhoods, landing on rooftops and parking lots, ferrying supplies and rescue teams to stranded families. Crew fatigue set in, but the pace never slowed. 
Far across the Pacific, the USS Essex faced the edge of Super Typhoon Meiji. As the outer bands hammered the ship, the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit and Essex deck team secured every helicopter with extra chains, bracing for sudden rolls and green water breaking over the bow. Standard exercises were abandoned at midday as winds topped 60 knots and seas built to 30 feet. The order came, launch two helicopters for urgent supply drops as soon as the wind dipped. Pilots lifted off into the tail end of the storm, delivering food and water to isolated villages on Luzon. Over 690,000 people would receive aid in the days that followed. The 31st MEU was later awarded the Humanitarian Service Medal, recognition for endurance and judgment when the line between safety and necessity all but vanished. Across the last two decades, U.S. Navy carriers have faced storms with winds up to 195 miles per hour and waves surpassing 40 feet. Each time, from the USS, George Washington's arrival after Super Typhoon Haiyan in 2013 to USS Essex's close approach during Super Typhoon Meiji in 2010, commanders relied on strict engineering limits. Flight operations halt at 45 knot winds and deck lashings are tested to 45,000 pounds. No carrier in these cases sustained structural damage, but the risks to stability, crew safety, and mission success were real and documented. The precise structural limits and damage control protocols remain partly classified, leaving some lessons out of view. Yet the record shows that even the world's most advanced warships must respect the raw power of a hurricane. As climate trends point to more intense storms, these encounters serve as a factual reminder. Engineering and preparation can reduce risk, but nature always sets the final terms.